Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and uh, I'm bringing you back at the end of April here. I uh, was going to bring you back at the end of March, but I figured I'd just uh, move on into April and, um, you know, try and uh, advance the time a little bit more. And so, yeah, I did all the hay contracts. I've done a bunch of fertilizer contracts over those past few months. We finished our own hay uh, in March, and then I've just been kind of keeping an eye on the productions here. Uh, but we do have a problem, and that problem is that we are out of grain and sugar beets. And uh, there's probably not anything I can do about that until we can, you know, harvest those um, items. So it is what it is. We just have to keep on keeping on. And um, as soon as we can, we are going to probably purchase a barley field. And we're probably going to take out a loan and purchase tin specifically because uh, tin has a crop of barley on it. I don't want to purchase eight because eight comes with nine and a bunch of forest land and it's super expensive. And that's not really what we're about. I could also do 32. Um, but 32 is almost $100,000 more than tin, which is kind of odd because if you look at them visibly, they look very similar in size. But yeah. If, uh, if you look at this, 10 is 429 and 32 is 510. So um, it does include a lot of extra land, too, I guess. So that might be part of it. But um, I, I just, you know, we're going to have, there's no way around it. We're going to have to borrow some money from the bank to do this. So, you know, I don't want to go overboard. Anything else that has barley on it is just too small. I mean, there's, there's this little field here, these two little fields here. And, you know, this guy here, and they're just, <clears throat> they're just not big enough, you know, to make it worth my while. Um, and the reason I'm going with barley, if you didn't already know this, is because barley can be harvested in June, whereas everything else is July or, or later for, for the grains, for the cereal grains. Um, so I, that's probably what we're going to do, um, you know, when the time comes. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and just grab <clears throat> whatever little bit of milk we have, and let's take a look at our productions here. Uh, the animals are are fine. The chickens are about halfway down on their on their grain. Uh, the cows are uh, in pretty good shape. In fact, I made another mixture, and I just kind of parked my um, tractor, my McCormick, in here, and I've just kind of been feeding them, you know, every day to keep them topped off. Of course, um, yeah, we still have thirty three percent in there, so. But I also made a mistake, and I'm going to show you that mistake, and we might turn that mistake into an opportunity. Um, basically, what happened is I overmixed the wagon. I put a little too much straw into it. And what happens when you do that is it changes from TMR to forage. But what you can do with the forage, and that's what all this is over here, it kind of just looks like hay, but it's actually forage. Does it tell us that if we look at it? Uh-uh. But we can we can put this in a bunker silo and, and ferment it. And maybe what I'll do then is look into getting one of those and, and just giving it a try. Um, I've never done it. I've seen it done, but I've never done it myself. And, you know, I did ask the question a video or two ago, which I haven't seen your comments on yet if it's worth doing bunker silage for selling. But even if the answer to that is no, it could definitely be useful, you know, for our own use, uh, you know, making bunker silage. So like when those three bales that are left are gone, then then we could switch to bunker silage. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the only thing that I absolutely have to invest in is the bunker itself. And if we look here, and go to silos and here so we can get the small one for 25,000 and that's all I would do for our farm anyways is just get the small one um, and that's what it looks like and we would we would put it in this area and then I would also uh, probably just buy a, a bucket for the telehandler um, you know to scoop that up and get it out of the way so we could put the bunker down there um, so anyway I think we might do that if for no other reason just so I can give it a try and, and you know do the silage now you can also purchase a rent or lease or whatever um 
Actually, hold on. Let me look and see who needs milk. Probably the dairy needs milk more than the bakery. The bakery doesn't use the milk nowhere near as quickly as the dairy does. Uh, yeah, the dairy is almost out, so we want to get them the milk. Uh, as far as the sugar goes, um, you know, we're out of sugar beets, so we're not making any more sugar, but both the bakery and the dairy have a decent amount of it. Now, I don't know how long that's going to last, uh, but you can see we're about half full in the dairy with sugar. Um, yeah, and then in the bakery, we are about half full, a little less than half full. So that could, you know, last quite some time before we can do sugar beets. We can't har harvest sugar beets until, like, October, so... When the sugar's gone, it's gone until then. Um, did I get the the load thingy? Oh, I already loaded it. Okay. Now, uh, another thing I want to do, and I got a mod that is basically a root crop shed, and we're gonna we're gonna put that in once we harvest the sugar beets, because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get all of them in the factory. And so, you know, we're going to need a place to store the extra. And, you know, I can put them on a pile on the ground, of course, but I, I, I got that shed off the mod hub for that very reason. So, um, have I installed that? It would probably be under silos. Yeah, I, I have. Oh, wow, that's $100,000. Lord almighty. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that expensive. Goodness gracious. But this one is this is what it looks like. It's kind of neat, actually. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, th I think all the, you know, beats that you see in there, that's probably just, um, decoration. Wow. I didn't know that thing was that expensive. I wasn't paying attention to the price. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll figure it out. And you know, the, along those lines, I'm probably am going to have to actually get my own silos. Well, I, I could still keep using the train station, I suppose, but. I don't know. It's, I'm thinking it's time. Whoop, I don't have to get out of here. Uh, I'm thinking it's time, you know, maybe we get our own silo too. Because, you know, once we get a big old, you know, uh, harvest of barley off field 10, I seriously doubt we're going to be able to put all that in the grain mill either, you know. And maybe it's just time to bite the bullet and, and get, a, get a silo. So kind of what I was thinking of is, you know, I'd mentioned to you guys that I want to convert this little odd section of this field over to a more yard so you know what we might do is something along these lines um if we got we could put the beach shed uh i'm i'm not really super worried about exactly where it's be positioned right now but i mean it's this whole area here that we could use so you know i could pop the beach shed down over here maybe and then we could get um the this silo here what is that that's a 400,000 liter silo what's this that's a 500,000 that's an 800,000 i'd probably get the 800,000 just because i mean for $30,000 more you get twice as much space and this is a multi fruit silo i believe it is anyway so that means we we can store you know different crops in it at the same time yeah, we might we might actually spring for that one. Either that, or I did purchase, uh, or not purchase, but I did. Oh man, look at the price on that thing though. That's over a million bucks. Uh, these are, I think these are modded silos. I got some modded silos too. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. We don't have to figure it out right now. Just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm thinking. But uh, I also want to get a nice shed too uh, when it's, before it's all said and done. But these sheds are incredibly expensive. So, you know, it could be something like, and that's almost more like a, yeah, that's a bulk shed. Well, this is cool. This, this one actually has um, solar panels on it. So can we look inside of it a little bit? Ooh, yeah, that we might be, we might look at something like, oh, wow, it's $455,000. Oh, Lord almighty. Wow, that's expensive. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> We'll have to wait and see on that. Yeah, these sheds are not cheap. And I know there's more stuff on Mod Hub too that we could look at. I even thought about, oh my goodness, look at the size of that thing. It's 340,000 bucks though, man. Really? That seems like an awful lot of money for that shed. 
Oh man, I don't know. Anyway, um, I thought about just popping this one in for now. It's it's really I mean, well when I say for now I don't mean like right now but soon. This would be it's a it's a really deep shed, uh, but it's not super wide so I don't know. And then th this is really kind of almost more like a hay barn here. Uh, well actually yeah it says hay shed so. Anyway, I'm just kind of thinking about those sorts of things as, uh, you know, as time goes on and as we continue to ed upgrade our farm and get bigger and better. But, yeah, we're going to have to get some grain and we're going to have to get some sugar, but we can't do anything about the sugar till October, like I said. So we'll figure out a field to buy um, at that point in time with sugar beets on it. Now... What I might end up having to do, if I don't have to do this, I probably won't, but I might have to turn around and resell, basically flip field 10. But like I said in, I think the last episode, I will plant a new crop on it first before I do that. Um, Cause I don't have a problem with field flipping as long as I plant a crop on it before I flip it back over. And then I'll get, I'll get all my money back for that field after we get the crop off of it. Okay, so uh, I haven't actually, Looked at the sales today on April the 3rd. Oh, look at that. There's another manure spreader. But we already have one of these. And the one we have has a higher capacity and a wider spread width. So, yeah, not even interested, man. Not even interested at all. So, before we wrap up April, let's take a look at our finances here. Uh... I'm just trying to think, do I need to, yeah, you know what, hold on, we should, let's just keep throwing, oh, wait, I tried, I forgot, April's the best month to sell clothing, I just don't know if I have a full pallet yet, man, I'm glad I remembered that, oh, by the way, if you're curious as to what cake and bread looks like in the game, there you go, <laughs> I didn't set these to distribute, so put them, put them back out here, but th this is not the time of year to sell these, uh, let's see, cake, Cake sells best in September, and bread sells best in December. All right, so we want to set these back to distributing so they stay inside the warehouse. Uh, so change the output mode to distributing, and change the output mode to distributing. Okay? Uh, but that's what they look like. So, yeah, we'll hopefully have a nice big old batch of these to sell when the time comes. Make, make some more money. Uh, but these are the only two products that the base game bakery will make, is bread and cake. There are other mods, uh, like there's donut shops and things like that. Um, but, yeah, this is what the base game makes these items here. It's kind of nice, though, because by the time we got the bakery, I had all of the other ingredients that, that the cakes required already in place. So it kind of made sense to do that. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go throw any wool that I currently have in the the spinnery. And then we're going to pass the time and wait till later on in the day. And hopefully we can get at least one full pallet of clothing to go sell. Because a, one, a pallet of clothing is worth a lot of money. Just a single pallet. And... Uh, but I want to make sure, you know, during that time, you know what we could do, actually? We could, well, let's not mess with this until my second hay cutting. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that there. I don't think it'll. There, that's a problem. I'm just going to leave that there till um, June. June is when we'll do our second hay cutting. So, yeah, let's go throw whatever wool we have in the spinnery so that way it doesn't run out. And then we'll we'll go into the afternoon uh, or even early evening. It doesn't really matter as long as it's still April. And uh, hopefully we'll get a, at least one pallet of clothes to sell. I don't know how many clothes there are in a single pallet, but hopefully we'll get, like I said, at least one. Okay, so that gives our 
spinnery, uh, over 2,000 wool, so they can keep that fabric coming into the tailor shop so they can keep making clothes. All right, guys, I will, um, I'm going to cut the camera here and just pass the time, and I will bring you back later in the day, and we'll see if we can get that pallet of clothing. Um, actually, here, did I look to make sure that it still is the best time to sell? Clothes. Yep, April is the best month to sell clothes, so, okay. All right, I'll see you uh, later on today. I guess I'm going this direction. All right, guys, it is uh, 5 p.m., so let's see if we can get some clothing out of here to sell. We want to go to clothes, and we want to change output mode to storing. Oh, look at that. We have two pallets, you guys. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Okay. Uh, so let's go throw these on the back of the pickup truck and... Last time I looked, Mama Joe's mini market is actually giving the best price. It's uh, her mini market or the grocery store. Those are the only two places that you can sell the clothes to. And we wouldn't have even had the option of Mama Joe's if we hadn't put her store in um, a couple episodes ago. So that is definitely working out in our favor. I'm just going to hand lift these onto the truck because... You certainly could do that in real life with just boxes of clothes. Maybe not the whole pallet, but you could put the um, the boxes on, right? Okay, cool. Now, just remember, too, this is only April. Um, from now, we're going to go for a whole another year, and we're going to have a, a lot more of these to sell next year. Okay, let me double check one last time. So close, yeah, the grocery mart's doing 10,250 and Mama Joe's doing 10,590. She must have a t-shirt sale going on or something. All right, here we go. There we go, $21,181 for just two pallets of product. That's pretty good. I guess uh, each pallet then is a thousand liters. So the price you see in the list is uh, is the price you get so not bad for remember that was you know, that's just for two pallets of product you guys um, That is not bad at all uh, Okay, and and also, you know for raising the sheep All we got to do is give them grass. and That's it. <laughs> They're so easy uh, So it's, it's a it's a pretty nice nice little deal there for sure um all right, now I think it's time for us to look at the money uh, for April and then wrap April up here. It's been a good month for us financially. Okay, so let's take a look at the ledger here. Now, um, I forgot like a numbskull to, <laughs> to pay my worker again in March. Um, my, well, actually I got to pay my pallet moving worker, um, twice. So I got to pay 64 for that, but I also have about 12 loads of hay that we did, uh, between the April hay contracts and my hay that I need to pay them for too. And that's basically 1200 bucks because there's two of them and we pay them 50 bucks a load. Uh, so let's go into here. And we want to remove $6,400 from here for the pallet mover for March and April. And um, I I wonder if I should just pay these guys up front at the beginning of the year for the whole year so I don't forget. No, I, I'm not going to do that because we might need that money for something else. And then uh, we're also going to take another $1,200 out for the guys that helped load the trailer. Okay, so that takes care of that. We are squared away with our workers. All right, so this is March and April. We didn't purchase anything in either one of those months. Um, I did, however, lease, uh, to, and, and I'm going to do the lease to buy thing, a third roller, because now that we have three tractors, that way I could get two workers going at the same time. Uh, these were our repairs for, the, for both months. Uh, that lease was for 
uh, the fast bailer and Ooh, what else did I leave? I leased something else too. I can't remember what it was now. Um, and then April was the lease for the fast bailer. Um, you know, just the monthly charge, not the, not the full lease charge and the roller property maintenance is there for our, uh, our productions and everything else. And then well, actually, okay, we finally actually have a production cost in the negative. It's been in the positive forever. Because I would think that those costs on the productions are would come out of here because it says production costs. And I've never been able to figure out why these are positive numbers, but now they're actually negative. So that's interesting. It's almost like I have something that's offsetting the cost, but I finally had more negative offset than positive offset. But I, I, I don't know. I just haven't been able to figure that out. I sold just a little bit of a bale when we were dropping off for the contracts. Um, we sold the, the clothing, so we got 21000 Man, that is such good money for just two pallets. Such good money. Um, that's our fuel for the month, water cost for the month. This was our gross income from both the hay and the fertilizing contracts that I did. Um, and this was, I think these were just FERC contracts in March, if I recall. Maybe a cultivating or two. This is what we paid workers. Um, miscellaneous is what we just took out. And I also, it, it, this isn't reflected here, <clears throat> excuse me, but I also purchased 5,000 liters of fertilizer for our silo, which cost me um, 8,000 and something. Okay, so that is our money for March and April. All right, guys, fantastic. So yeah, I think the plan's gonna be that Mar. Uh, uh, May May is usually a really slow month, so I'm probably just going to burn right through May. And when we get into to June, I think we're going to try our hand at bunker silage. Um, I think we will. So I'll probably will not bring you back until June. And um, we still have a little bit of time left in this episode, so I'll, I'll bring you back uh, at least when June starts. Um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so yeah, I'll see you guys in June. All right, guys, we are back, and it is June the 1st, and I have changed my mind about uh, purchasing field 10. I don't think it makes sense for us to, to do that um, at this point in time. And the main reason for that is because if we look at the crop calendar, uh, we're, we've pretty much passed the time that we can plant anything on that field that we would want to plant. Um, because again, my original plan was to purchase field 10, um, you know, for all the barley that's on it and then turn around, plant something else on it and then resell it to get them our money back, to, um, to pay the bank back off. Cause we're going to have to borrow, uh, in order to do that, we'd have to borrow almost $300,000, uh, to purchase the field and then also still have some operating cash. And since we can't, we, we can no longer replant something on there, we'd have to wait at least two months before we could plant canola on there. We're stuck with, you know, that all that interest for two months. And it just doesn't make sense for me to do that. Um, instead, what I did is I grabbed every barley harvesting contract that came up, um, even the little ones this time, and I borrowed the equipment for the largest one. And look at the size of this, <laughs> this header, man. The thing is huge. Uh, so we got this really nice John Deere. Uh, combine and an enormous header. We have a John Deere uh, 8, uh, 8R 310 tractor here with dualies on it and a couple of legal trailers. And we're just going to use this equipment and we're going to harvest every barley field uh, on the map. Uh, and then we'll take the barley from that, top the chickens off because the chickens are getting kind of low and then the rest we'll throw in our grain mill. And then we'll, then we'll probably be okay for a while because if we look at our productions here, um, the only thing that uses flour is the bakery. And it's, you know, it still has almost 20,000 liters of flour in it. So, you know, um, it's not like we're we're completely stopped, at least as far as the bakery is concerned. I would still like to, you know, get keep making flour and get a surplus of that because, you know, then we can also sell that, the extra of that too when the time comes. But, you know, once we dump this barley back into the grain mill, um, you know, we'll get that production going again too. So that just made a lot more sense for me to do. That way I'm not taking out that enormous loan and then having to pay interest on it for two months before I can you know, replant the field and resell it. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense and that's the plan. Now, we also have uh, some other things that have to happen here in June too. Uh, we have to get our field, uh, our own hay harvested. And as I had mentioned earlier, 
I'm going to try uh, my hand at bunker silage this time uh, just to see, you know, if, if I enjoy it and if it's practical. Um, so we'll get that done. I don't know if I'm going to do all of my hay as bunker silage. We'll probably do one of the fields first and then kind of see, you know, uh, where where that leads us. I, and if you remember, too, I've got that extra forage that's sitting in a pile over on the ground that we're, we have to put in there, too. So we'll try that out. And then, of course, I have a bunch of chores that need to take place. Our greenhouses are almost out of water. And so we got to get that taken care of and, you know, transport the milk, all that kind of usual, you know, monthly chores types of stuff, which, by the way, I absolutely love doing. It's so much fun. OK, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, if we look at the contracts here, we have uh, one contract. I think it's on 61 that goes up to the North Grain Mill, and that's the only one that goes up there. So we're going to knock that one out first. And then we have two. I think it's 80 and. excuse me, 80 and 8 that go to Feeding Green South. And then the rest of them, uh, including the two big ones, go to, to Johnson's Farmer's Market. So let's get the, the little ones knocked out first, and then, you know, then we'll do the big ones later on. Now, we're not going to get very much grain, hardly any grain at all from the small ones, but I figured, you know, since we're borrowing the equipment and we're kind of going to go all over the map anyways, we might as well just get them all knocked out, make a little extra cash get a little tiny bit of extra grain in that process okay so let's start by jumping in the john deere here i'll keep you with me for you know the start of the, the barley harvest but then we're gonna have to wrap up this episode but what we'll do is we'll um we'll just start up the next episode right pretty much where we left off and keep going I don't know how many episodes it's going to take me to get all of this June work done, but it could, you know, could take two, two or three. We'll just have to see how things go. Okay, so I'm going to get you out on the road, and then we'll send him out to the field, the first field we're going to do. And then we got, we got to hook up the header trailer. Uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to transport that enormous header uh, directly, so we are going to have to use the trailer for that. Okay, dude, so I want you to go to uh, field 61. And why don't you just kind of stage yourself right about there on that road. Excellent. Okay. And I might even get my combine going too on the bigger fields just so we have two of them going at the same time to save time. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so let's get the header going here. This is a really nice machine, man. I think I may have used this once before, too. Um, I'm not sure if it's John Deere's largest combine in, in Farming Simulator 22, at least in the base game. It's an X9-1100, but it's a gorgeous machine. There we go. And it looks like we're going to have to put the header on from the other side. So you know what I'm going to actually do? Let's get another tractor going. Uh, I'm going to save the fent for baling. because Oh, that's the other thing. We're going to get a crap ton of straw off of this, too. So let's put the New Holland. No, that's not the New Holland. I might, hmm, yeah, I was going to say, I might get another worker started on cutting our hay, too, but I'm not a really good multitasker, <laughs> so we'll see about that. We'll see about that. In fact, you know what I'm going to do with this one? I'm going to send this one to field 80, uh, because that, um, yeah, that one's got to go to... Uh, feeding green south. Yeah, so let's do that. We'll send you down to, <coughs> excuse me, to field 80. And the AI is probably going to want to get back out on the road, so we might as well get it, get it, him or her started. Okay, so set destination. I want you to go. To 80 and 
just stay right here is good enough. Okay, cool. Now let's get back in the John Deere and that way we have room now to get over there to get this on the, this header on the trailer. Is it on? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so let's head on over to, let's see, field 61. Um, because again, that's the only one that we're taking to the north uh, grain mill. So we'll knock that one out first and then go from there. So I'll see you guys over at the field. All right, so we're just gonna park the header here in uh, this field full of weeds. And we wanna come at it from this side. Yeah, among other things, we are going to get an enormous amount of straw off all of these fields. We might even completely fill up our barn. I don't know. We'll see. If we don't completely fill it up, it's going to it's going to be quite full. And we'll probably, like we've done before, um, we'll probably end up selling some of that too at the end of the year, just because, you know, we don't need that much straw for our own purposes. And it sells reasonably well in January too, so that's a good thing. All right, let's hook up the PTO there, and we want to make sure that we are on Enable Straw Swath, which we are. Okay, nice. Wait for this car to go by here. And then our first field is just right over there on the other side of our trailer oh yeah gotta unfold first Okay, let's start harvesting some barley. Okay, we got a car coming, so let's wait for that thing to get get on by. We should be able to easily get this whole field in one load here. Love this machine, man. Maybe someday we'll own it. John Deere X9 1100. She's a beaut. I still haven't changed OG's clothes. Oh, <laughs> I should pay attention here. Getting offline. Yeah, the poor guy probably should uh, get a change of clothes. He's been wearing the same outfit for like two years now. <laughs> Oh man, that's fun. Okay, let's wait until we get all the straw out of there so we don't spread it all over the place. Make a mess. Can't get to it if it's off the field. Oh, 
Oh, by the way, I think I may have told you guys this. I do have the GPS mod installed, but the thing about the GPS mod is you have to... Um, you have to buy, and I think it's relatively expensive, you have to buy an extra um, doohickey to put on <clears throat> on your machines to use it. So I forgot about that when I purchased the, the Fent. I was actually going to put, uh, thinking about putting it on, you know, whatever new tractor I ended up getting. You know, we can always add it later, though, too. So I probably will at some point get it on the Fent and... You know, try it out, and if I like it, then we might put it on the other tractors, too. But I'll tell you what, you know, you can do without that mod. It's not as eloquent, but if you bring up the mini-map, and the square mini-map in particular, because that one always stays oriented to the north, then you can just orient your, you know, your vehicle on the, on the cardinal points. You know, like right now I'm going zero degrees. And that also, you know, helps you keep pretty straight lines. So you, you could maybe call that your the poor man's GPS. Okay. Wait for the rest of the straw to come out. There we go. One more pass. Once I get, um, probably once I get the combine going on the large, the first large field, then I'll bring one of my tractors out here, probably the Fent with the V-rake and the square baler, and then just let the worker take care of all the straw. I'll turn him loose, give him his head, and then, you know, whatever he doesn't do, I'll come back and clean up later. It seems to work pretty well to do that. It just occurred to me too, for any of you people who are watching who doesn't know what give him his head means, it basically means when you let a horse uh, go where he wants to without controlling him with the reins. So don't get any other ideas about what that means. <laughs> it just occurred to me that that didn't sound very good. Uh, so yeah, I just want to make sure we're clear on that. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so that takes care of this field. Let's turn the header off and get the pipe out. And again, this load is the only load that's going up to the north uh, grain mill. Beautiful barley, man. Love it. Okay. So, we have two uh, contracts for feeding grain south. Uh, one of them is over at field 80, and the other one's way up at field 8. I mean, they couldn't be further away from each other, for goodness sakes. Okay. I think what we should do is... I'm trying to think of how, how to handle this. We could go hit 80, and then just... Mm, Yeah, it's kind of kind of a bummer that they're like on complete opposite diagonal ends of the map here. Um, the combine's down here now, but you know we're also right next to sixty-seven or not? Wait, hold on, we're right next to yeah sixty-seven, and that that one though goes to Johnson's. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send my combine down to eighty. I'm going to load up that trailer there, and then I'll send that trailer up to 8, and we'll send this combine up to 8. 
because I want to get those two knocked out first, and then everything else on the map will be for Johnson's. And actually, you know, now the more that I think about it, we should just have our combine do the little fields anyways. And that way we can get the big guy on the big fields. So the big fields are really going to be 10, 32, and even 8's pretty good sized. Yeah, okay, that's what I think we'll do. But, hey guys, we are out of time in this episode, so I'm basically going to end this episode here, and I'm going to start it right back up for the next episode where we left off, and we will continue on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.